From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SFP TV and the Standard Speaker. It's been a touch and go situation. Federal money problems threaten huge cuts at Keystone Job Corps, but there's been a reprieve. The enrollment freeze thawed at Keystone, our top story on News 13 for this Tuesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It's good news all around. The freeze on new student admissions at the Keystone Job Corps Center has ended. Senator Bob Casey has fought the freeze and other potential cuts to Keystone Job Corps, even met with officials and students there about six weeks ago. Now he says the Department of Labor has lifted the enrollment freeze for the Job Corps program, which provides education and training for economically disadvantaged young people. The freeze, which was spurred by $60 million funding shortfall by the federal government, dropped student enrollment by one-third at the facility in Butler Township. As a result, 15 employees were furloughed. No word on if or when they will return to work. There are now 400 students at Keystone. With the freeze lifted, it should climb to back to about 600. Well, driving through construction sites is hard enough. How about living next to one? Christina Papa met with one resident who says the construction project on Broad Street in Hazleton has her blocked in and fed up. When Pauline Miller walks out of her home, she steps right into a construction site. There's a bunch of construction, of course, going on, and it just makes it all complicated. PennDOT's hired construction team is hard at work outside Pauline Miller's home. She lives on East Broad Street with three of her children. Now Pauline thinks the piled up cement blocks and construction materials could be a safety hazard for her kids. I uh, can't trust the kids out there. They got nowhere to play or anything like that. Pauline's son doesn't like the construction for other reasons. It's noisy, I can't sleep. But it's not the noise that bothers Pauline, it's the construction vehicles blocking her in. And uh, we have a lot of problems in the back trying to get in and out. Some cement blocks that could have been moved closer and given us a little bit of, of ability to be able to get out. And yesterday when Pauline went to go pick up her son, she said her car was stuck in the alleyway behind her home. Eventually she had to use this gap between cones and gravel to get out of her backyard onto the street. The construction won't go on forever. Construction workers hope they'll have the cement walkways cleared by the end of the year. News 13 was not able to speak with a PennDOT representative today on camera. However, they did release a statement giving an update about the Broad Street project. The release says because of the nature of this project being in the business district of the heart of Hazleton, we understand the inconvenience to the public and ask for their continued patience as we complete this project. We are certain that the long-term improvements will far outweigh the short-term inconvenience caused by construction. And to receive weekly updates on the status of the project, PennDOT says you can email James May at jama at pa.gov. As for Pauline, she just wants the workers to try not to block her in. Just have a little bit of courtesy and remember that there's people that have to live back here. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Police say things are getting worse for some Hazleton residents forced out of their homes by a fire Sunday morning. Now looters have moved in. The raging fire in an abandoned home on McKinley Street damaged neighboring homes and residents were temporarily forced to move out. Now police say that some electronics were stolen from one of the homes. On Monday, residents returning to one of the homes to gather valuables discovered that their 42 inch and 32 inch flat screen televisions had been stolen. So was an Xbox 360 game system. City police were dispatched to 596 McKinley Street for a report of items being stolen from the residents. Uh, that was one of the residents of several that were affected by the uh, fire that occurred in that neighborhood uh, over the weekend. City police are investigating a theft of uh, several TVs from the residents, a Xbox 360 game system, and several games associated with that system. We suggest the uh, owners of the property or tenants thereof remove all their personal property as soon as possible if it's safe to do so. Well, the three buildings were damaged there. Nobody was injured. 16 people were forced out of their homes, however, by that blaze. Well, it looks like more trouble in the local housing market. For nearly two years, foreclosures were down, but now they've spiked again. As Matthew Petrillo explains, Luzerne County has taken a hard hit. Last month saw a dip in existing home sales. And now, with the first quarter in the books, foreclosures reflect a similar trend. Bank repossessions, mortgage default warnings, and property auctions in the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, and Hazleton area grew by 55% in the first quarter, 
compared to the same time last year, according to RealtyTrack, a national real estate monitor. In this area, a lot of it has to do with timing, I think. In particular, he says, a backlog grew as deeds from sheriff sales were filled and more foreclosed property sale closings were conducted. Depending on logistics and legalities on the property, it can take years to get a property actually all the way through foreclosure that they actually come on the market. The spike in foreclosure activity followed eight consecutive quarters of decreases in the area dating back two years ago. And the area's foreclosure trends are somewhat unique. Foreclosures nationally dropped 23% in the first quarter, according to Realty Track. And although the region had a smaller volume of foreclosure activity than other metro areas in Pennsylvania, the 55% increase was the largest in the state. Uh, the biggest factor for foreclosure is uh, mortgages that haven't been paid. Um, in a lot of cases, they're loans five years ago, six, ten years ago that never should have been made. After a home is foreclosed on, they're often put up on the sheriff's auction, like this home behind me. Its opening bid is around $34,000. Now, that's a steep decrease compared to the average listing price for the area during the height of the housing boom just a few years ago, which is about five times that. Still, Lawfer says foreclosures are just a tiny way to tell how the real estate market is doing. And here in Hazleton, it's not doing great, but it's not doing bad either. Sales have been pretty steady for the last, I'd say, six months or so. Um, Starting in about October and November of last year, they started to pick up a little bit, and they've, they've been pretty steady since then. That might not last too long. More expensive homes are seeing strong gains, while less expensive homes are seeing a drop. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. News 13, some wet weather helps warm up our temperatures, but then it's back to cold nights and struggling daytime temps. We'll tell you all about it in News 13 weather. This entire school year, the Hazleton Area School District and its students have been taking the fight against bullying very seriously. Today, Christina Papa met the ninth grade center students on the Hazleton Area track as they took an oath to help prevent bullying. Side by side, they stand together against bullying. And as an entire ninth grade building, including our pre-K classes, we came out here to show that unity on our track. Throughout the year, students were educated on the importance of knowing and stopping bullying. Today, the ninth grade center concluded the curriculum with a special rally. So today, we stand together and we'll stay on track with bullying. Vice Principal Susan Salvatera says today's rally doesn't mean the school and students have stopped their fight against bullying. I think that we've seen certainly a decrease. I think there will always be some bullying in some form, but I think this is just to get that out to everyone that we do need to get actively involved because bullying hurts. One ninth grade student says bullying doesn't just go away, which is why she stands up for her classmates who are bullied. I see it often and it is being stopped. If I see it, I stand up for the person who's being like, like bullied. And they always say thank you and everything and they're very polite about it and then the bully just stops. Another ninth grade student, Martin Bartista, says bullying won't just go away, which is why everyone needs to come together. Because it's happened all over the nation, I'm sure all over the world probably. So to come as one, to come as one to help out, it's making a good change. Martin isn't the only one hoping the students can become united. Together, ninth grade, along with pre-K, concluded the rally hand in hand as they made the pledge and promised to fight back against bullying together. I will not keep quiet about bullying. I will not keep quiet about bullying. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, not much going on out there, and that's why it's going to stay pretty much until tomorrow. But tonight's creative condition includes a technicolor rainbow. It's by Jaden Radwitz, a first grader at Valley Elementary. And there's Jaden outside under that rainbow and blue sky, and there is a very patriotic American flag as well. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Partly cloudy with a low down to 40 degrees. Then for Wednesday, showers likely, possibly late afternoon or evening thunderstorm. High, though, is nice, up to 68. Showers and storms continuing into the overnight, but then the low plunges to 31 degrees. On to Schuylkill County tonight, partly cloudy with a low down to 39. Then for Wednesday, showers likely, possibly an afternoon thunderstorm, high making it all the way to 70. Those showers and storms continue into the overnight, but then 
The plunge goes on Schuylkill too, low around 38 degrees. Well, do you think you might be going to the bathroom too often or sometimes you don't quite make it? An area health clinic is offering bladder control advice to flush the pain away. And Matthew Petrillo went to the doctor's office today to get a preview. If this sound is way more familiar than you think it should be, you might have an overactive bladder. There's basically a miscommunication between the brain and the bladder. So instead of you being in control, your bladder is in control. Overactive bladder affects more than 17 million people in the United States, though mostly women. It causes a sudden urge to urinate that may be difficult to stop and could even lead to an involuntary loss of urine. In other words, people could sometimes pee their pants without even knowing it at first. So basically, if you go to the bathroom more than eight times during the day or two times at night, then you have an overactive bladder. Getting in control of your bladder isn't always easy, especially when you're not sure what caused it. Dr. Hockman says possible causes can vary. Sometimes it's food you eat, something you drink. Um, it can be neurologic in nature. Sometimes there's an injury that happens along the way. Previous surgery can actually trigger it. Dr. Hockman says she has some solutions to retrain your bladder to properly function. First, there's medication, she says, though that doesn't work for everyone. The same goes with certain exercises. So if neither of those work, she has something that will. The solution to that is InterStem, which is a reversible device which is implanted just above the tailbone with a little tiny wire. And you can actually try it before you buy it. She says the devices used are minimal, like this external device that allows you to control your bladder. Then there's this device that's inserted just above your tailbone. This is actually the permanent implant. It basically looks like a little tiny pacemaker. So basically it's gonna control your bladder and tell it to behave itself when it should. Dr. Hockman will go over this procedure, plus more this Thursday, April 25th from six to seven o'clock at the Hazleton Health and Wellness Center. That's located at 50 Moise Drive in Hazleton. Pre-registration is required. You can find out how to do that on our website, ssptv.com. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good out luck if you played. The Daily, 049, Big 4, 5514, Quinto, 43715, and The Treasure Hunt, 1, 2, 10, 16, 19. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, St. Michael's Church in Shenandoah will be holding an American Girl Doll Bingo Sunday, May 5th. Doors open at noon. Bingo starts at 1.30. Admission is just $20, and events tickets are available by calling 570-462-0809. And one more quick announcement. The Clifton R. Lewis Good Life Foundation will be holding the third annual Celebrity Basketball Game Saturday, April 27th at 6.30. The event will be held in the Greater Nanticoke Area High School Gym and will feature a game, dunk contest, and three-point shootout. Donation is just $8, and for more info, please check out www.crlgoodlife.org. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Leonard Benedict Piskel of Elliottsburg. Mass is Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. at the St. Bernard Church. Viewing will be held Wednesday from 9 to 10.30 a.m. Arrangements are by the David Myers Funeral Home. Frank L. Tedesco of Cunningham. Mass is Thursday at 10 a.m. in the St. John Bosco Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Joanne E. Gasper of Weatherly. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Carl L. Yanoshik of Hometown. Mass is Thursday at 10.30 a.m. in the St. Richard's Church. Friends may call Thursday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. in the church. The Damiano Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Ralph William Bianco of Hazleton. Memorial services Friday at 2 p.m. at the Butler Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. Grace Kaplow of Sandy Valley. Mass is Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. And Dorothy Smedchko of Whitehaven. Funeral is Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Layman Family Funeral Service. Friends may call Wednesday from 5 to 8 p.m. or Thursday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's, once again, the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. 
SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, it's the start of a new week, but it's still, well, the same old thing for the Marion Colts baseball team, and that is play ball. They were wall to wall last week, and here they go. They got Sunday off and back at it again. Let's go down to hometown and you take a look at the uh, hometown team. No pun intended there. The Marion Colts, and uh, they're taking on Shenandoah Valley. That's a little bit of a rivalry when you talk about Marion and the Devils. And uh, early on, after a scoreless first inning, it would be uh, Marion who would put some runs on the board. And this would be a uh, harbinger of things to come because uh, not only did they put a couple across in that second inning, they would have a couple of more big innings. And the bats were definitely booming for uh Jeff Neitz's club yesterday, and they also got some timely pitching. Shenandoah Valley did not help themselves out at all. They were very porous in the field, and uh, that all led to Marion running away with this one. I guess if you're a Colts fan, galloping, okay? Anyhow, Marion comes up with the win, 10-2. Final yesterday, Marion Colts over the Blue Devils of Shenandoah Valley. Now let's stick in the Schuylkill League where North Schuylkill pounded out a 12-5 win over the Olympians of Jim Thorpe. And if you take a look, Jake uh, Demeter, three for three, double, couple RBIs. That's about as good as it gets on any given day when you're playing baseball. Let's go back down to hometown because it was also softball action going on down on the Marion campus. What you're looking at here is not Shenandoah Valley, but the battling minors of Minersville. And if you're really not a softball expert by any means, Minersville is always one of the tougher teams throughout District 11. And you could actually say Northeastern Pennsylvania. They're a double A team, but they'll go toe to toe with anybody. And yesterday, well, the battling Miners put on a typical clinic like performance. Minersville, one of the better teams, as we said. They showed that yesterday that things have not changed very much down there in Minersville as they dominated Marion from the beginning to the end of the game. The battling Miners keep on streaking. They win this one, 8-1 Minersville over the Phillies of Marion. Now, Schuylkill League action scoreboard, Lords Regional, 7-1 winners over uh, the Golden Bears of Monroy area. Hey, how about Becky Demko? I mean, sometimes she can look outright dominating and yesterday was one of those days. She no hit the Dallas Mountaineers up in the back mountain yesterday. Now it wasn't a perfecto because there were a couple of errors and walks, but you know what? They needed that performance because Hazelton area, even though they've been playing very well, they uh, could not put a lot of runs on the board. They scratched across one run. They actually built the run and that would be the difference in the game. They remain undefeated, one nothing winners over Dallas yesterday. Wyoming Seminary, 13-7 winners over the MMI Lady Preppers. Volleyball action, Hazelton area takes care of business against Duncanic on the road. And in tennis, Hazelton area, 3-2 winners over Wyoming area. They won the early single sets, and really what it came down to was the first double set, and uh, that's where Hazelton area made the difference in this one. Pittston, straight set win over MMI on the courts yesterday. Speaking of MMI, baseball action today. They're hosting Hanover. Softball finds Blue Mountain at North Schuylkill and Tamaqua at Southern Lehigh. Tennis, MMI right back at it. A non-league encounter with Jim Thorpe. It's been something everybody's been waiting for. The area's newest state-of-the-art facility is now open. We're talking about celebrations down at Sand Springs it's going to seat up to 300, and whether it's private bridal suites that you're interested in or exquisite on-site ceremony location, this is the place you want to check out. Breathtaking floor-to-ceiling stone fireplaces, elegant cathedral ceilings, and they have the large windows overlooking the picturesque first hole of the fairway. White glove service from a friendly and courteous staff. It's celebrations at Clubhouse Drive, Drums, Pennsylvania, located within the Sand Springs Complex. Welcome to this week's super segment. Today I'm with the new assistant superintendent, Dr. Butler, and we're talking about 
student and parent involvement more importantly. Can you explain why is it so important that parents are involved with the school district? Sure, Christina. The district is looking at enhancing parent involvement. Uh, meeting with the PTA Council last week, Dr. Antonelli, Superintendent, and myself, uh, really have come to um, gain an, an appreciation for uh, what seems to be a, a groundswell of uh, interest uh, in the parents participating uh, in a closer, more intimate uh, relationship as far as communicating about school events, school programs, and in general what's happening in our school. So we are looking forward to enhancing this partnership with the parents uh, through some sort of uh, perhaps an advisory council or regular meeting times uh, through which we can interact with parents, get their ideas, thoughts, suggestions about the schools. Oftentimes, oftentimes parents hear uh, things or are aware of things that as administrators we're not and we're interested in uh, working for continuous improvement in our schools and look forward to partnering with the parents in this respect. Perfect. So there are, you know, a lot of parents, as you said, that want to get involved in the school, including Casey, who's a little first grader. Your daughter goes to Freeland Elementary Middle School. Can you explain what's your involvement and why is something like this so important to you? I recently joined the PTA Council and took the role of Vice President and we realized that parents were anxious to be more involved and were looking for ways to feel welcome and participate with our school district. And we started holding meetings at the council level with Dr. Ansnelli and Dr. Butler as well and we found that we've got the support that we need from the parents from several schools and just bridging that dialogue, bringing the dialogue together and building those bridges with the school district is so important. And so if anyone wants to get involved, a parent wants to get involved, is there any way that they can reach out to contact anyone to, to maybe become part of this? Absolutely. As Dr. Butler had explained, we are trying to form a new partnership um, separate from the PTA, um, something that doesn't require membership or dues or anything like that, that would allow those parents to advocate on the broader level for the whole school community. Dr. Butler and Ms. Yankevic of the school board have agreed to be our liaisons, and we are going to move forward with this parent partnership committee. Um, so to get in touch with the school district as well as PTA council would work. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, and thank you as well. Um, that's this week's super segment. We'll see you next week. Plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. Good news for students and workers at a local job corps. The federal government puts enrollment back on track. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back.